This episode is brought to you by Philips One by Sonicare. One up your brushing with Philips One. It's a big step up from your manual toothbrush with both rechargeable and battery powered versions so you can choose the one that best fits your life. Learn more at philips.com slash one. That's P-H-I-L-I-P-S dot com slash O-N-E. You're listening to the Huddle Up! Podcast with Chad Jensen and Zach Kelberman. Join Broncos Country's deep divers at milehighhuddle.com and sound off. And now it's time to drop some knowledge. Okay, we are live, but we got to let it breathe just for a moment here as we bring on Facebook and get everybody together. Got to get the whole fam damnly at the table here so we can dig into today's Denver Broncos topics. It's going to be a guess. It's also going to be a day of innovation. We're going to be doing something today that we have never done before on the show. So welcome in everybody to the Huddle Up podcast presented as always by Mile High Huddle, powered by Blue Wire Pods. I'm your host, Chad Jensen, with me, my fellow football priest and the deputy editor of milehighhuddle.com, Zach Kelberman. Zach, first of all, how are you, my dog? And second of all, there's a little rumor going around that was sparked by Benjamin Albright, that Royce Freeman might have a uh, suitor out there on the old trade market. I, I think it was sparked by common sense because the Rams lost their starting running back. Cam Akers went down with an Achilles tear. I, I believe it was an Achilles tear. He's out for the season, and the Rams have Daryl Henderson and literally nobody else behind him. They have someone called or something called Jake Funk as a backup running back. So it makes sense if the Broncos have a surplus at running back and the Rams need a running back, they they likely make a deal. This is the only team, though, that makes sense right now to me as a trade suitor for Royce Freeman, a guy who enters training camp as the fourth string running back in Denver and a guy who likely would be released at final cuts if not traded before then. So it might happen, but the thing, as I wrote here, Sean McVay said they're not interested in signing a veteran right now, maybe not – Signing one, maybe trading for one is different. They like the guys they have behind Henderson. Maybe it'll change, but uh, we'll see what happens. Far be it from me to uh, bat an eye at the ads that allow us to make a living doing this, Zach, but this one in particular is is a little bit aggressive. It won't go away, so I can't do my zoom in on the share screen, but I digress. Um, it is a no-brainer, right? Like Benjamin Albright – we say that in jest. Obviously, Benjamin, when he says something, you really want to perk, perk your ears up and pay attention because usually something similar to whatever he had to say unfolds. But in the case of Royce Freeman, Zach, he's a guy that we've been we've tapped for the better part of the last, well, ever since Philip Lindsay was shown the door and then they ended up drafting Javante Williams as a potential trade chip right down the road. And the question is, what kind of value do you get for this guy? I mean, we're talking – well, this isn't Aqib Tlaib who – what did he net, Zach, if I remember right? You probably had the news article for us back in the 24-7 days. Wasn't it was a fifth a rounder? Fourth? It might have been a fifth. I thought it was a fourth. but Fourth at best. Let's just say fourth at best. That I know for sure <clears throat> was not greater than a fourth-round pick. Perennial all-pro, pro bowler. I mean, I think the best you might get out of Freeman, depending on how desperate the Rams might be, is sixth rounder, in all honesty. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well when I wrote this, a late-round draft pick. It might be a conditional seventh that could be a sixth-round pick, but um, what do you pay for a guy who, again, likely will be cut uh, in, by early September from the Broncos and a guy who has little tread left on his tires – because he came out of Oregon as a leading rusher there. He had a ton of carries in college. And the Broncos, at least before Philip Lindsay kind of Wally pipped him, they ran him into the ground as well. He only had 35 carries last year, though, so he was lightly used. He might be a little more um, game to help out a team like the Rams, but I don't see what you would get more than a bag of chips. And in this case, a bag of chips is a six-round pick. You know, I had some pretty solid hopes for Royce Freeman when the Broncos drafted him, knowing – that the tread on his tires, relatively speaking, was a little thin from all those carries at Oregon. But, you know, it just hasn't panned out. At the same time, Zach, would it surprise – Like, actually, let me put it this way. How much would it surprise you if Royce Freeman were to go somewhere else, like a Sean McVay, West Coast, Shanahan-style offense that has the potential to, you know, produce some prolific rushing attacks? Well, how much would it surprise you to see him go somewhere and have – anything even remotely approaching bell cow success. 
Yeah, I, I don't see it. And I'm with you where I like Freeman coming out of college, and I think he was performing really well before that unfortunate high ankle injury that allowed Philip Lindsay to take over the job. But he is what he is at this point. And Freeman, even though he was a third-round pick and we had high hopes, he is a jack, which is just another guy. He doesn't do anything overly well at all. He's, he's, he's a plotter, a two-down kind of guy. He's not overly great as a pass catcher. He's not overly great as a pass blocker. He does not, he's not overly great on special teams. So those guys are a dime a dozen. And if the Broncos could get a six-round pick for him from the Rams or another team, I would, I would run and take that offer. Guys, shout out to each and every one of you joining us here tonight live. And we especially love also those of you listening after the fact into the future. I'm talking now on the on demand podcast side, Apple or wherever you enjoy the show. We're uh, excited because, you know, Wednesdays, especially during the off season, we reserve for our superstar segments. And tonight we have two superstars that are going to join us. JT, AKA J Thomas from across the pond, making his second appearance on the show. And then of course, Ed Keating as well, who is also making his second appearance on the show. It's going to be great. We can't wait to talk to each fella. Real quick, Zach, before we get too far in, though, uh, I don't want to keep the men waiting too long, but I want to grab this super chat from Max Power that, Max, you know I appreciate you. In in all honesty, Max, you know I love you, but this seems a little bit rando, right? Like, not, not Rambo. We're not talking about first blood. We're talking about rando, like random, all right? Why do people say Shermer doesn't use tight ends? The Broncos were fourth in tight end targets and 12th in 12 personnel. It is a false narrative and very misleading, in my opinion. Max Power from across the pond. Hey, we do appreciate the super chat, my friend. Not sure exactly where that came from, but Zach, if you would like to go ahead and take this, and then we'll get to matters of business and and get to uh, JT. I mean, those stats are also skewed as well, Max. Uh, I mean, historically, Pat Shermer never utilized more than one tight end, if that in his offense. Those are just facts. And last year, the Broncos lost their number one receiver. They couldn't count on their number two receiver in Jerry Judy. They didn't utilize their number three receiver in K.J. Hamler. So what did they have to do? They started peppering Noah Fan and Albert O and everybody else, including Troy Fumagalli, who got a lot of late season run with targets. So you can form your own narrative. I mean, you're attacking ours or you're attacking mine, but you have yours as well. And again, I'm not giving it much energy, much much attention. We'll agree to disagree on Pat Sherbert. That's not a hill I want to die on. You might, though. By the way, <clears throat> pardon me, shout out to Michaela, who is apparently dealing with a cracked tooth. Uh, Ouch. There is nothing... Actually, that's an, that, uh, you got to st- stay away from absolutes. There are a few things in this world as tormenting as tooth pain i hate to- tooth pain nothing so Michaela, worse that. nothing worse yeah. i was actually not gonna you know gonna correct you there's nothing worse than that there's stomach pain headache you know, whatever tooth pain is the worst so michaela i hope you feel better very soon stay on that advil here's here's a secret though all right the, the, we're not giving out medical advice but a little bird told me once that um the combination of just make sure you got your doses correct of ibu and tylenol is the perfect thing for for tooth pain. One more, and then we're going to grab uh, JT here. Shane, thank you for the super chat, buddy. He says, hey, Chad and Zach, can't wait for the preseason. Looking forward to seeing this team in action. Indeed, my friend, as are we. And hopefully, Shane, we get a chance to see you in the flesh when we show up to Empower Field at Mile High with the big MHH tent, September 26th. That's week three, Denver Broncos home debut. But Zach, real quick, let me just holler at everyone. This is going to be the rapid fire matters of business. You know how to find us on Twitter, at Huddle Up Pod, at Mile High Huddle. Our producer, John K on Twitter, at John K M H H Zach on Twitter, at Kelberman NFL, myself, at Chad and Jensen. Go follow the Huddle Up Podcast Facebook page. Do your football priest a solid. Help us out there. Also, kindly consider becoming a supporter of Mile High Huddle on Facebook, and that gets you access to Kelberman's Corner on Sundays, the Trickle Zone on Saturdays, Broncos Book Club with yours truly. Big blue button on our Facebook page, very top. Click that. You're in like Flynn. Shout out to each and everyone who has subbed on that. It just, we love seeing it. It blows us away every time. So we appreciate you guys. And hey, if you can't do those things, merch store, huddleuppod.com, you know, subscribe it on as a supporter. It's all good. Super chats. Hey, just make sure you're subscribed. Apple key, YouTube key. Make sure you're subbed. Like this video. All right. That's a solid that anyone can do. All right. That tells us a lot and it helps us a lot. And then, hey, if you think we're doing a good job, share this out there. Help us continue to grow and reach new like-minded Broncos fans just like you. The economy is made up of real people doing real stuff, and it affects everything, which you obviously know since you're a real person doing real stuff. 
Marketplace is here to help you get smart about everything beyond the what of the day's business and economic news. We dig into the how and the why with the real people driving our economy. From big tech and interest rates to small businesses and what's happening at the Fed, Marketplace breaks it all down so you don't have to. Listen to Marketplace wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by HP+. In a world full of smart devices, shouldn't your printer be smart too? It is with HP+. These printers know when they're running low, so you always get the ink you need delivered right when you need it. Plus, you save up to 50% on ink, so you can print whatever you want, as much as you want, any time you want. Huh, that is pretty smart. Get six free months of instant ink when you choose HP+. Conditions apply. Visit hp.com slash smart for details. All right, without further ado, let's bring on J. Thomas, a.k.a. JT, the second time we've had him on the show from across the pond, staying up into the wee hours of the morn to make his second appearance. Jay, what's going on, dude? How are you? Thanks for making some – yeah, see that clock? Thanks for making some time for us, brother. Oh, thanks for having me back on, man. It's great to talk to you guys again. I'm looking forward to it. Zach, Jay was a big hit when we had him on the show the last time. I mean, it was like compliment after compliment after compliment. So you've – you know, it's hard to follow yourself, Jay. You know, it's like – you know, trying to uh, Metallica. You don't want to follow Metallica, right? Now you're now you're trying to rekindle that energy. But anyway, your thoughts on Royce Freeman, dude? Would you be at all bummed to see Royce get dealt, knowing that you got Melvin there, you got Pookie there, and if he does get moved, what do you predict on a draft pick? What's it going to cost that team? I mean. It- from a reporting perspective, it, it it makes sense to tie the Broncos, Royce Freeman, to the Rams. As Zach alluded on, they, they need a hole. It kind of reminds me of the situation when they the Rams brought in CJ Anderson to back up Tom Gurley. Hmm. You know, he's a bit of a bigger back. You know, he can get behind the, the quicker back like Gurley. Henderson's a bit quicker. Royce Freeman's about 30, nearly 40 pounds heavier. He could be that thumper. Um, it doesn't have a lot of tread with Denver, but he did at Oregon, and that's that's the problem. But I think Denver's got something really nice going with what potentially with Pookie and with Gordon. So I think if the price was right, I think they could see them parting ways with Freeman. Not pro- I mean, we could see this happening before we drafted a running back in the draft. You know, so even after that, now we have drafted one with a, a higher draft pick as well. I can I can see if, if the Rams were to call up, I can see Peyton sitting there and, and having a, a lengthy conversation about it. But in terms of what it would cost, a fifth perhaps, I mean, I wouldn't go that much higher. Obviously, he had 1,700 yards rushing. He's not broken the doors down, you know. So, yeah, fifth round pick, sixth round maybe conditional. I can see it happening. Makes sense. Uh, you know, Jay, you mentioned the Broncos have a good thing going with Pookie Williams and Melvin Gordon and the whole offensive arrangement. It's been a minute since we had you on. Tell us how you feel about Denver going into the season. We're days away from training camp now. Again, optimism is at an all-time high. You heard it from Austin Schlotman. I mean, the team feels good about themselves. How do you feel about the Broncos about for 2021? I'm extremely optimistic, but I'm cautious because there has been a lot of movement. We've got a completely revamped secondary. We brought in a lot of new safeties. We brought in uh, Colton Sutton's coming back. We don't know how he's going to be. Jerry Judy transitioning from that makeshift number one back into that number two. How how are they going to utilise that to try and get Colton Sutton back open with Jerry Judy on the field as well? Um, Albert O should be coming back. We hopefully see some two tight end sets. I'm not sure that's going to happen. Um, and and of course, um, <laughs> yeah, don't tell Max Power. I mean, you could be top four for throwing to tight ends if you're constantly throwing end arounds and stuff, you know. Right. You, you throw that 12 times a game and you'll be top. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm so optimistic, but there is so many pieces there that you have to be realistic with rookie corners. We've got new corners coming from other teams that we've brought in in free agency. We've got new offensive linemen. I mean, that's, that's a camp battle in itself. Christian Berry and Miners, that could change the whole outlook of the offensive line because Miners is very aggressive, gets in people's faces. That could help for the run game. But Christian Berry, I think, is a little bit more savvy. So there's a lot of moving pieces and a lot of happened. All good. And I'm very optimistic with that. But Hold on the brakes a little bit because it all needs to be put together first because there's been a lot of moving pieces. Well said. Well said. 
You know, today I started uh, a series that's at milehighhuddle.com, you know, previewing the key camp battles, right? The key position battles. And of course, how could you start with any position besides quarterback, right? With Drew and, and going against Teddy Bridgewater. And I wanted to make it a little bit different. I just, I didn't want it just to, to be just this, you know, kind of straightforward, same old, same old that fans read every single day uh, or, you know, every single year, I, I should say, leading up to training camp. So I tried to come up with some fun different angles. And one of them was coming up with an idea of, all right, if, if, one, if, if each guy has his own respective advantage or his own kind of like ace in the hole, what would that be? Like what, what gives him maybe in his own way a little leg up? And so I want to put that to you, Jay. For Drew Locke and for Teddy Bridgewater, respectively, if each guy has any kind of advantage over the other, all right, um, what would it be? I'll start with Drew. If if Drew has a leg up over Teddy in any way, shape, or form, what gives him that? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I th- I think they're completely different quarterbacks. I think they are the running back room of the quarterback room. You need the guy that's mobile, who's going to run around, who's going to burst into holes, make these big plays happen. But then you need that conservative guy, the bigger guy who's going to get the short yardage, who's going to move you up the chase. That's what Teddy is. I think Teddy's conservative. He he won't turn the ball over as much as Drew. He he thinks about things. You know, he's, he's savvy. He's got a lot of experience in the league. He's, he's familiar with Shermer as well. Um, great locker room guy. Drew's that... Indiana Jones, he's going to take them risks. He's going to sling it into them windows that Teddy Bridgewater won't even think of opening. So in terms of that, I think they're completely different guys. I would put Drew Lockdown as being that if you want to be aggressive and Teddy Bridgewater, if you right, if you want to game manage the game. You know, if you're behind, you want to put Drew Lock in. If you're leading in the game up two touchdowns, you want to play Teddy Bridgewater. I'll treat you like a, it looks like kind of a running back situation from, from my point of view, to be honest. Exactly. Drew quick, take, Indiana take, take, Jones take. lock. That's I love that JT so much. That's so. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking I'm, as, as he said that I'm going. I'm loving that, and I'm thinking, hey, you need a new catchphrase for Drew Lock. It's fortune favors the bold, just like Indiana Jones. <laughs> and you're right that that does kind of you know if you're if you're saying, hey, I'm going to throw out a phrase. Tell me which quarterback this defines. Fortune favors the bold. No one's pointing to Teddy Bridgewater, Zach. Exactly. And just for the reasons that Jay you know, laid out there, sometimes when you want to just get a first down when it's third and two, Teddy Bridgewater is your guy. But if you want to sling it from 22 yards out into the end zone, fit it into a tight window to Cortland Sutton or Jerry Judy, uh, Drew Locke has that arm talent to do so, and Teddy Bridgewater doesn't. That's not our opinions. Those are just facts. That's biology and anatomy. Uh, Jay, real quick, though, I mean, I'm assuming – this is all an assumption. Please correct me if I'm wrong here – you're a lock guy. You're pro lock in this quarterback competition. Absolutely. If not, okay. Well, give us your break it down for me. If Drew Lock quarterbacks the Broncos in 2021, how do you see the, the season going? And you know, objectively, realistically, if Teddy Bridgewater gets the job or wins the job, ha- how do the Broncos finish in your eyes? I, I mean, I think it all. I, I do think Drew Lock wins the job. Personally, I think that too much is riding on the coaching staff. And the overall pick of Drew Lock for them to kick him straight to the curb. It, I think his leash is short, but I think the Broncos will win more games with Drew Lock if he is put in the right situations. Now, right. like I said, you play a certain game with Drew Lock that you can't play with Teddy Bridgewater. Now, if you're going to send Drew Lock out there and manage the game like Teddy Bridgewater was out there, you're not going to win many games like that. But I can see the ceiling for wins being around 12. 13 at a very high push, considering if the defense is looking great. We've got a lot of weapons that can't be double teamed. The offensive line should be better running backs as well. So 12, 13 wins with Drew. And I think not too far behind with Teddy. Based on the same outcomes, I think 11, 12 with Teddy. Because make no mistake, Teddy, this is a proper quarterback battle. This is straight down the middle, 50-50. It's just depending on how the coaches want to play. Exactly. All right, JT, dude, last question, because we kind of have a unique show, and you're freaking staying up late making sacrifices for MHA. (laughs) Hey, everyone's excited to see the new guys uh, in the orange and blue, whether it's a free agent that's never donned, you know, Bronco helmet in a game or a a rookie draft pick or whatever. Of the, the, the new blood that has come this year, whether it's a free agent or whether it's a draft pick, which guy are you most looking forward to seeing in action when football rolls around? Both late round safeties. 
both of them. I absolutely love them. With the secondary being, I mean, next off season, this secondary is going to get pretty thin unless we start paying out some money. So I'm really looking forward to seeing both these safeties fill in. It's a traditional like Will Park situation when we had Darian Stewart and TJ Ward in there, bringing them in to rotate. They're both bangers. They're ball hawks. I really am looking forward to seeing these safeties. Having Justin Simmons in the room as well. The cornerback room is stacked. But next season, it's going to be Justin Simmons on his own. You know, you, we got a nice depth quarterback, um, cornerback room. Excuse me, but that safety room, there's there's going to be some real competition there for Kareem Jackson's place. So any game time these two, these two guys get, they're they're going to have to go go for the hall. And I'm, I'm looking forward to see that man. That, that's my favorite battle. Zach, that's a question, an answer I would not have expected, right? I was actually thinking that that's that's a definitely a first for us, mentioning late-round safeties. And, and, JT, I'm so glad you did because I'm right there with you uh, behind Baron Browning. I'm so excited to watch Jamar Johnson play because I think you're right. It's obviously Justin Simmons going forward. He's the long-term answer at safety. Kareem Jackson just for this year only. But I'm of the mind that Jamar or maybe even Caden Stearns could take over that starting safety spot. They both have the dynamic, dynamicism. They both have the playmaking ability. I'm right there with you. I'm excited to watch them both. 100%. Right. I, I can see Jamar Johnson making a stride in season and getting a lot yep. more game time than we actually think he's going to yep. get. I really do. Just needs to work on that tackling, right? Get that get that technique down. But uh, JT, exactly. again, such a pleasure. Always a pleasure talking with you, my friend. When we say thank you for making time for us, I mean, you're staying up late. You got a young family. And it's You got life to lead. So, we appreciate the sacrifice, and it always brightens our day to have you on the show. So welcome back. Thanks again. And we will get you back on the show in the very near future. So we'll we'll be in touch, and I'll get that uh, T-shirt ordered tonight for you, my friend. Oh, you're here. It's a pleasure to talk with you both. Pleasure to see everyone. Thanks again, and I'll see you all soon. You guys can see how to follow Jay on Twitter, at jthomas89. You want to do that. Talk to you later, buddy. There he is. All right. Let him hate, Whoops. baby. Love it, dude. JT, seriously, um, I don't like playing favorites. You know, it's like wh- when someone asks you, hey, you know, wh- which of your children is your favorite kid? You know, it's like they're all your favorite. And that's true. You love each one equally, you know, and each one you have a favorite thing about them. That's how I feel about my friends. That's how I feel about the community here. Jay, though, I, he's just a, he is a unique individual, most definitely, as is Michaela, who's dropping in to show some love here. Appreciate that, Michaela. Like I said, Tylenol, ibuprofen, talk to your doctor first. <laughs> Thank you, Michaela, for your super and your uh, continued support. You know, it's funny, though, Chad. I was genuinely thinking the same thing about JT. I, I was sitting here listening to myself, just hanging on his words and, and wanting to hear what he had to say, not just because it aligns mostly with what I think about the Broncos, but he has such a realistic, objective, and clear approach to what's either plaguing or, you know, booning the Broncos prospects uh, this year. Among, we've had so many, and each and every person we bring on the show is great in their own way. But JT is definitely among my favorites for sure. And Edward uh, Keating, who we have coming absolutely. up in just a minute. And Ed does some heavy lifting for us as well. We're going to talk to Ed in just a minute. Um, real quick, I just want to grab a couple of patients, patient people here, including Todd. What's up, Todd? Good to see you, buddy. Appreciate you. Um, and you know what? As I look at this... I just realized I'm connected to the wrong internet. <laughs> I'm connected to to a different router than I should be. So hopefully, have you noticed any connection problems for me tonight? You're good. John, no? All right, I guess I'll whistle past this particular graveyard. Gary, what's up, buddy? Willie jumping in. Appreciate the super. Friendly reminder, John doesn't have a show yet. <laughs> hey, we got things soon. in the wind. We got things Very in the wind. Very soon. Uh, John, what about BG? Can we grab BG and then let's grab – we'll grab uh, Ed – because Ed's been a very patient boy, if you have BG. There he is. Legendary superstar, Brian Greenfield. Thank you for that, my friend. You know we love you. We appreciate you. And, guys, hey, what is it, a week from today? Yeah, Zach, one week from today, training camp begins in earnest, and then it's the whirlwind, baby. Um, I'm assuming that BG is as excited as we are. I can't believe we're a week away. Some teams are, have reported today, so football season is in the air for sure, and I'm so happy we're getting back to it. Brian, thank you so much. You're amazing as always. All right. Let's bring on Ed Keating, who is a legend in his own right as a superstar here. Second appearance on the show as well. Edward Keating in the hizzy. Ed, what's going on, bro? How are you? I'm doing great, guys. Just uh, sitting here, you know, waiting patiently and finally out of the heat today. So I'm happy about that. 
Well, hey, dude, we appreciate you. And, uh, you know, we're rolling with the punches. It, we could have just said, hey, let's f- see which guy is willing to reschedule or is able to reschedule. We're like, no, let's forge ahead. And this was Zach's idea. Let's just bring them both on and have a have a good old time. So we appreciate you rolling with those punches, Ed. But let's uh, really quick. We've already spent a lot of time on the topic of Royce Freeman. But since it is the topic of the day, what's your take on that? And if the Broncos deal him away, what do you want to see him get back? Uh, well, with Royce Friedman, it really doesn't bother me too much. After the whole Philip Lindsay thing, like I was more upset about that than I would be about Royce Friedman at this particular point. And to get back from him, like I agree with you guys. Like actually, when you were sitting there talking about, you know, what do you think we should get of him with uh, JT? I was just like, you know, sixth round pick. I, you know, running backs like him, like you guys said, are a diamond dozen. I completely agree with that. Like. It, you know, we already got three on the roster that we're going to use this year, and I don't think you're going to get much out of uh, Royce Friedman. So a sixth, I'd be happy with. And I want to kind of shift the conversation in another direction, more Broncos-centric. Among the the running back competition, the battle going on right now between Melvin Gordon and uh, Javante Pookie Williams, how do you see that shaking out? Do you see Javante taking hold of that job by week one, by midseason, by 2022? Uh, how do you see those carries being divvied up? Uh, personally, I'm hoping he takes a job by week one. I hope he wins it in training camp and preseason. Like, that boy, I watched – I did watch some of his college highlights after we drafted him. That boy does not go down. Huh. He does not go down. And, you know, I didn't see a whole lot of fumbles from him either, which is more than I can say for Melvin Gordon. Like, I like Melvin Gordon, but when the game's on the line you're trying to chew clock, I'd rather have Williams in there. It's <laughs> a great point. Especially because you never know when Melvin's going to cough one up, right, and, yep. and put the ball on the ground, uh, which often comes at – a very inopportune time. I mean, there's never an opportune time per se to to turn the ball over, but it's just the way things tend to work in football. I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked JT about the quarterback competition, and he talked. Obviously, the focus there was more on Drew, and but let me ask you this on Teddy, because I know you're a let him hate true bluer uh, to the bone, and that's cool because we're we're right there with you. But if Teddy Bridgewater has any kind of leg up or advantage going into this battle, what would it be? Uh, he wouldn't turn the ball over as much. And, you know, but with like, like you guys said, with Locke, you know, I like him being aggressive. Like back in 2019 when we had, you know, uh, what was his name? Scangarello. I was screaming at my TV because he was too conservative almost every down. And I'm just like, I'm sitting there screaming at my TV <laughs> and, with Teddy, yeah, you'll get that conservative. You know, you'll be he'll be conservative. He'll you know take what the defense gives him underneath, whatever. But I don't want that. I want someone to be able to you know, like you guys said, fit those balls in the tight windows, twenty two yards down the field. And you know, I don't think you're going to beat the Chiefs with Teddy Bridgewater. Whenever you're going up against Patrick Mahomes, you need someone that's going to be going to take those shots and get you points on the board, even if it winds up in the turnover. At least you know. You're seeing what you got in lot. Teddy, he's a game manager. You're not going to win this league with a game manager unless it's Tom Brady. <laughs> and I right. doubt Teddy Bridgewater is Tom Brady. Yeah, I think he'll fall a little short of that this coming season. Uh, but if he does, uh, Ed, manage to win the job, Teddy Bridgewater, how do you see the Broncos' record shaking out? I mean, with the defense, uh, just as JT was saying, with the defense they have in place alone, they can win nine or ten games. But how high do you see the Broncos reaching with Teddy B under center? I can see that. I mean, like I said, Teddy Ridgewater, yeah, he's a game manager. He's going to be safe with the ball. So I could see nine or ten wins, but we're going to get swept by the Chiefs. I can already see that coming out right now. And I don't want that. Like, I'd rather take, you know, the ladder and have Drew Locke in there. And I think with Drew Locke, we're going to win more than nine or ten games. I think 12, 13 games, and we'll beat the Chiefs at least once with Locke. With Teddy, we're not going to do that. And just to be clear, if Teddy does win the job, I will support him. Well, as I'm would glad, we. Yes, and I'm glad you you said that because, man, some people get so caught up in um, you know absolutes when it comes to, <laughs> hey, who do you like more? Who do you want to see? If I like Von Miller more than I like Bradley Chubb, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to be rooting Bradley for, Chubb. yeah, or <laughs> that I hate Chubb, or that I'm going to even be rooting for Von over Chubb. Like if they're both closing in on the quarterback on a 
sack opportunity. I'm not going to be like disappointed if Chubb gets there first. So anyway, very, very well said, my friend. I want to ask you as well, like, hey, which which of the newcomers, right, from free agency, from the draft, are you most looking forward to seeing out on the grass uh, when the football season rolls around? Um, well, let's see. Honestly, I would say um, Javante Williams. Like, like I said, you know, like I said before, you know, I think he's going to win the starting job, but, you know, before week one. And with, you know, Gordon going to be gone this year, I'm hoping he takes his job and maybe we can trade Gordon and get rid of him by midseason if it doesn't cripple us too bad in the cap hit. Because he's the future of the Broncos, and I want to see him, you know, take that job and run with it. You know, I like the fact that we're young on offense. You know, a lot of our players are like 25 or under, and I like that. You know, like our defense is really old. You know, a lot of players are a lot older, you know, upper 20s, early 30s. So, you know, a lot of them are probably going to be gone next year, especially if we don't win. So I'm looking for Javante Williams. You know, that's who I'm looking forward to watching this year. I, I have a new question for you, uh, Ed, real quick. I haven't, we haven't asked this question to many people, if any at all. What's one game that you've circled on your calendar this year, one game that you're looking forward to the most of any? Both Chief games. I'm – I am so eager to watch those. Like even last year, like whenever, you know, we played them in week seven, I had that circled on my calendar. Cause like I told you, a lot of my family from Missouri, they're chief fans after the Rams left, they became chief fans. And I'm tired of hearing them tell me, Oh, well, you know, we beat you the last, whatever time we beat you for the last five years. And I'm tired of hearing it. I don't even care if we win by a point. I just want to finally be like, ha see, we beat you. You're not that good. <laughs> I know, man, it's become like, Almost surreal this winning streak the Chiefs have over the Broncos. Like, you know, this is this is a team I've followed for dang near 40 years. I've never seen anything like it, and it's relatively uncomfortable and painful. You know, even as media covered this thing, it's like, come on, guys, let's uh let's change the record, right? Let's switch things up here. Um, all right, last question for you, my friend, as it relates to just the the overall prospects of this team. I mean, do you, without getting too out over your skis on orange colored glasses, you know, going 17 and oh, like, you know, Austin <laughs> Schlotman, by the way, had a very politically correct, good answer, by the way. Well, yeah, 17 and 0 sounds good to me, right? But uh, at the end of the day, do you, is this a team that, I mean, do you really see this team challenging the Chiefs in the AFC West? Like, honest to God, bottom of your heart, do you see that? I know you want that. Do you see that? Well, if this defense is good as they, you know, say it is on paper, like if this defense plays up to what they can be and the coaching's right, like I've said this numerous times on this page, I've made videos. I'm more scared of the coaching this year than the, you know, injuries, the defense, Drew Locke, Teddy. I'm more scared of the coaching. So if the coaching can get their act together this year, Pat Shermer can actually call plays to the players' abilities and Fangio, you know, gets better with his time management. I'm not going to say they're going to go undefeated because that's just silly. And I don't think they're going to sweep the Chiefs either. I believe they'll split with the Chiefs. I do believe they'll you know, sweep the Raiders because you know they don't have an offensive line. The Chargers, Justin Herbert, I think they'll split with them. But personally, I think they're going to go 12-13. 12 wins or 13 wins. And you know, like I said, this defense has to play up to their potential. And as long as Drew Locke is in there, I believe we can reach 12 to 13 wins. If it's Teddy Bridgewater, I'm not as, you know, um, optimistic about that. I think we'll finally be over 500 with either one, but I want to go, like I said, I want to take the shot and give Drew Locke that last, you know, chance. And I see a lot of people on here arguing, saying, you know, Drew Locke's trash, Drew Locke this, Drew Locke that. And I'm just, I'm tired of seeing it. And it's like, you know, and people still talk about getting Aaron Rodgers. It's like, I I don't know how many more times we got to go through this rodeo he's not coming to Denver. And I just, like I said, I just, I see more wins out of Drew than I do Teddy. It's such a good point because everyone talks about the Broncos and their quarterbacking. No one talks about the Broncos and their coaching staff. And that is equally, if not more important than the quarterbacking this year, how they're managed by their superiors. So I'm right there with you, Ed, for sure. All right, brother. Well, hey, thanks for making some time for us. And by the way, those of you who are members in our MHH Superfan Facebook group, it's it's free. It doesn't cost you anything to be in the group, and there are many thousands of you in there. So you're all, besides 
you know, the community within the podcast, you're well aware of Ed, who does a great job helping us to moderate the group and yes. keep things on point. And then quite prolific with his, his videos, sharing his thoughts as Albert puts on here. So Ed, Hey, appreciate you, my friend, all your support, all that you do for us. And I want to remind everyone too: follow him on Twitter at Edward Keating. That's key, K, <clears throat> pardon me, K E A T I N G 15. Ed Keating, you're the man, dude. We'll look forward to talking to you soon. I appreciate it guys. And thanks for inviting me on the show and the season needs to hurry up and get here and let's go Hamler. <laughs> All right, Let buddy. Him hate you, baby. Appreciate hey, you. Get a new Jersey dog. Cause didn't he change? what did he change to one? No one. Didn't he change? I got I want- Locke, I got Hamler and I just got my Simmons Jersey. That's a true blue Broncos fan. All right, buddy. Have a good night. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Ed. Easy, guys. Thanks. Ed Keating. Great lineup tonight of, just dedicated, hardcore, super chat, superstar members of our community. The, the best, you know, I the just, best. we're just very grateful for the, for the community we have here and the support and the personalities and the passion and the knowledge and ev- that each person uniquely brings to the conversation. So, and Ed, you know, really does do a good job. I asked him to tone down the, the swear words on his videos on uh, Facebook. He did it. And uh, so good Funny job. To you. <laughs> good job to you, Ed. Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds like we're we're on a, like a ship at sea when you hear Zach and myself when we're we don't have a camera or a microphone in front of us. I'm, I mean, it's not that bad, but it's pretty Week bad. Three. It's pretty bad. Week three, you'll see. I'm gonna grab Seth. That here. is such pretty- a creepy hippo. I swear to God. Hey, every time. Hype it up, dude. Bring bring the house down, Seth. We love it, dude. Thank you for the support as always. You know, we appreciate you, brother. Seriously. Why do the ears you. move with his hands though? And why and why are his eyes on top of each other? You know, so many funny. questions about the acid hippo, but thank you, Seth. <laughs> the acid. Dude, that reminds me of something. My daughter can actually wiggle her ears without like I could do that, but I have to move my cheeks or something, right? Or like my jaw. She can just sit here and be like dead just completely still wiggle her ears. Yeah. Can't it's do weird. it. All right. Thanks again, Seth. Appreciate you, buddy. <laughs> um, she's not listening. <laughs> guarantee she's not. All right. So, Oh, there she is. I'm just kidding. Um, Albert, good to see you, bro. He says, how are the preparations going for 26th of September? They're going really, really well. We got the uh, tent pretty much ready to go. We've got a, all of our plans kind of ironed out uh, for those who need to catch planes to make it uh, here to Denver. We got that ironed out. So it's, it's going to be fun. We're going to offer some food, some um, opportunities to hang out with us. And it's not just going to be Zach, myself, John, you're going to see Luke there. You're going to see Lance there. You're going to see Eric there. Uh, hope I know you'll see Mike there, Mike Evans. Hopefully you'll see KB Kenneth Booker. I'm not hundred percent on that. I need to check with KB uh, on that. In fact, uh, it's going to be really fun. As many of the gang as we can get there, we're going to try. But for sure, you're going to see those people who I just mentioned. It's going to be fun. So we'll hang out. We'll do some content. And then, hey, it's a game. It's Denver Broncos home opener. It's going to be a gas. And, Albert, we can't wait to meet you as well. I want to shake your hand and thank you for all that you've done. And everyone out there, too. I want to just thank you guys for all your support. And I can't wait to do that in person on September 26th. By the way, John, as I get here, uh, this super chat – I noticed on the back end, there's one from Andrew Baker that uh, stars on Facebook. If you see that one, uh, and then it just left my site. So I can't tell you exactly what the topic is, but if you see that one. Meantime, uh, can I bosom? Is this, is this, uh, is this the progeny of Billy the Kid? It is, right? Dude, why did you change your handle? You know I suck at this, dude. Josh got me a couple we- a week or so ago. You, you guys, you throw me for a loop when you change your YouTube handle, but it's good to see you, brother. Uh, hope you're doing well, Kane. He says, uh, hit the like button, y'all. Let him hate. Good to see you, bro. Thanks for the support. I don't like it, Kane. Can A Bozum? I, I, I much prefer Kane Dawson. So if you take that into consideration, we would appreciate you now. But seriously, thank you for your support and let him hate as always. Um, real quick from Luis. On YouTube, hey, are you guys sure JT's from the other side of the pond? This dude is on top of his pop culture references and brilliant football takes, more so than your casual football fan in the U.S. And that's probably why, Luis, is, you know, American sports here, it's ubiquitous. A lot of people take it for granted, right? It's just there. It's just a part of the tapestry of American life. Whereas if you're a U.K. fan that caught the 
fever, whatever, pick your sport, MLB, football, whatever, you know, you kind of have to work a little bit harder to follow your team or to even follow the league. So you end up probably finding people who are a lot more dedicated and committed to the team on a, uh, you know, from a, from a sample size perspective, they're probably a little bit more dedicated than the average person who says they're a Broncos fan in the States. That's me guessing. That's just based on what my experience has been through this website, milehighhuddle.com and doing the podcast and reaching people from all over the world, Broncos fans. It kind of seems that way, Zach. And that does, that's not to take away from us here in the States. I'm not trying to, you know, uh, rain on a, any of my American brethren and sisters uh, parade here, but I think that might have a little something to do with it. I also think Broncos country is the best fan base. I also think we have the best viewership in Mile Eye Huddle and the Huddle Up podcast. But I got to say, J- Jay is one of the more dedicated Broncos fans out there, regardless of where he lives. Great Twitter follow as well, at Thomas 89 I believe. That's his Twitter handle. Go follow him, guys. Great guy. Seriously. Kane, again, what's up, dude? Our tailgate week three is going to be so lit. Yes, it is. It's going to be fun. It's going to be legendary, and we got to make up for a little bit of lost time because that dat gum pandemic canceled our meet and greet hangout in Vegas last year. So yeah. it's we're really looking forward to it. Can't wait. Literally, cannot wait to beat the Jets as, as well as you said. It's a game too, not just the tailgate. We're going to beat the Jets. That's going to be fun to watch. The Queen <laughs> from the top rope, and this truly is wow. a top rope super chat. Thank you, Christy. So great to see you. Love you. Appreciate you. She says, another week closer. Thanks for grinding it out, guys. Hey, thank you, seriously, for your support. This allows us to do it. This is what provides us the means and ability to do this and grind it out. So, Christy, appreciate you more than uh, we can say and and hope the girls are doing well. Hope you've had a great summer. Yeah, and we hope to see you out there week three as well, Christy, again. So just so we can thank you personally for all that you've done. You have kept this ship afloat and then some, and you've been so generous each and every day. It's always great seeing you, and we love you. Seriously. Here's a uh, grand compliment. Uh, Michael Ronquillo, Ronquillo? Ron- Ronquillo, I think is how you say it. Ed is my favorite Broncos fan. There you go, Ed. That's a nice compliment. Andrew, what's up, dude? Thank you for the stars, my dog. He says, big-time question for y'all, or for all three y'all. Who is our threat in the red zone? I think Fant or Sutton, but hopefully not <laughs> Nick Manis again. LOL. Yeah, I mean – you answered your own question there, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, it's fan, it's Sutton. Uh, but don't sleep on don't sleep on um KJ Hamler being used a little bit in the red zone. I know he's not the big, you know, the you, you shorten the the field in the in the red zone, so you gotta kind of go vertical to start, you know, maximizing so the guys that can go up and get the ball and whatnot, obviously they take precedence. But I was a little bit encouraged. I've gone back and watched some of the film from second half of the season recently. And you started seeing Pat Shermer from about that week eight victory over the Chargers, that comeback on light bulb going off, you know, and how you could maybe utilize KJ Hamler in a way that that would because that speed that he brings to the table, Zach, you, whether you get him going north, south, or east and west, can be brutal, dangerous. And so all it takes is a little bit of innovation, just a little bit of creative vision. This dude could be a weapon. And it's not a traditional answer in terms of hey it's not six five you know guy that can jump but don't sleep on it here's the issue though as always does pat Shermer have just a little inspiration just a little creativity we don't know that until we see that we can't say that for sure i am going to say though we're going to get a Cortland sutton type season from him and noah fan is going to be a pro bowler this year you know in uh in respect to him not being on the top 10 tight end list around the NFL. He's going to be in the Pro Bowl. He's going to be a dominant red zone threat. But also, Albert O, who was getting a lot of red zone looks last year before he got hurt, once he comes back, they run two tight end sets in the red zone. How do you stop all those guys? How do you stop Fan, Albert O, and Cortland Sutton on the field together? And you bring on a running back like Melvin Gordon, potentially. That's a, that's a tough matchup nightmare for opposing defenses. Well said. Let's grab BG again. Thank you, brother. He says, I think our defense is as advertised. We, it, let's see, excuse me. I think if our defense is as advertised, we wouldn't get swept by the Chiefs with Teddy. Maybe not, but, you know, I'm thinking back. I'm, I'm, I'm going back in time in my head here. You know, 2016 was the, the last stand of that Super Bowl 50 defense. And then Demarcus Ware got hurt, got old, and retired. But you still had a lot of the core dudes in 17. And the 17 and let's see, this yeah, the 17 defense was one of only two teams 
to finish in the top five against both the run and the pass, all right? The Vikings were the only other team to do that. Didn't come out on the wash because you didn't have a quarterback that could be a force to be reckoned with. You know, so I want to be here with you, BG. I just want to keep our expectations in check. Now, if on top of what you're saying here, if the defense is as advertised and Teddy gets what might be the best one-two rushing attack this team could potentially have had in 15 years since the Shanahan days, potentially, if that comes to fruition, I'd be a little bit closer to saying that right alongside you. I think Brian here is uh, is commenting on Ed's point, and if I could speak for Ted for Ed for a second, excuse me, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I think he's saying that the defense with Bridgewater would keep the Broncos in the game, so you would keep it within 24 to 27 points, but you need that extra little bit at quarterback to potentially be the difference in a Patrick Mahomes-led opponent. So that little difference in arm talent, at least, or physical talent upside, that's in favor of Drew Locke. That's not in favor of Teddy Bridgewater. I'm in agreement also with what Brian's saying as well. And I've been saying the same thing. If Teddy Bridgewater wins the job or gets the job, they can be a playoff team. And I expect them to be a playoff team. The only difference is floor versus ceiling. It's 10 wins versus potentially 12 wins. And one of those wins could come against Kansas City. I don't think one of those wins would come against Kansas City, though, if it was Teddy B under center the entire game. Well said. Luis, thank you for the super chat, my friend. He says, trading Royce is the best option for everyone. After all, he was one of the surprise veteran cuts projected anyway. JT killed it. Don't think it's going to be the last time we hear the Locke Indiana Jones reference. Ha ha. I agree with you on that. That one uh, is going to stick in the MHH zeitgeist, I think. And it's so true because if you've watched the Indiana Jones movies, and most of them are great, it's a guy who uh, takes risks. It's a guy who, who's adventurous and a guy who trusts his own abilities. And I'm not really trying to stretch here. This is not a cliche. I mean, Indiana Jones gets himself into bad situations, but he has the ability to get himself out of those situations. And the same thing applies to Drew Locke. He is the only one on the roster who can fit his whip meaning the ball through a tight window and make something happen. Teddy Bridgewater just anatomically and, and, you know, physically cannot do that. Real quick, shout out to our star senders, our superstar senders on Facebook, including the new king of the hill on Facebook, Matthew Beatty. Wow. That is easily the biggest individual wow. star uh, contribution we received from one of our community members on Facebook. So Matthew, Shout out to you, my dog. Pat yourself on the back. That's a record. That gets us a little bit closer to our, our goal of 500,000 stars on Facebook, at which point we're giving away a Von Miller jersey. And everyone who has contributed stars to get us to the 500K goal, their name goes in a hat. The more times you've starred, the more time, you know, tags, so to speak, or, or whatever that you're, you have in the hat. So Really appreciate you, Matthew. Gary Leeds, Palmer, Legend, Claude Riley, Andrew Baker, Travis Tarbox. Got your message about the shirts, dude. We're stoked on that. Uh, Jordan, what's up? But are Jordan, is it Jordan or Jordan? I think we settled this before, but now I don't recall. Uh, and then Elena, Joel Katz, each and every one of you, thank you so much for your support. You know it means the world to us. That's incredible. We need some sort of like, uh, you know, Mount Rushmore for Facebook star senders. And if we do come up with one, Matthew Beatty will be right there. Thank you so much, Matt. Seriously. Really means a lot, buddy. Whoops. Sorry, get that up there, John. Throw that back up. My bad. There he is. He says, last year, it's Matthew. I made a bet and lost, so I had to wear Pat Mahomes' jersey every time the Broncos played. Killed me every time. So the re- so the season was partly my fault. LOL. The things ah. you do for a girl. Shake my head. Shake my head indeed, my dog. But you it know what? It was your fault. <laughs> hey, guess what, dude? You're a man of integrity. A lot of guys, you know, I had a buddy, for example, who bet uh, that he would paint his face in uh, Seahawks colors if the Broncos lost to the Seahawks in Super Bowl 48 and then didn't happen. You know, Broncos lost and he didn't fulfill. And and it was amongst friends, so it wasn't like the worst thing, but like he wouldn't do it. And it's like, come on, dude, you, you made the bet. But either way, Matthew, thanks, buddy. Uh, Matthew, I, I think it's safe to assume, right, the Patrick Mahomes jersey has been destroyed and you're no longer with that girl. Uh, okay, good. Thank you. Let's have a good put, season. Put it behind you, my dog. Christian, what's up? He, uh, Thank you for the super chat. And uh, we were definitely um, upset that you couldn't make it for your superstar segment. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out down the road, but we were looking forward to talking to you. 
our resident lifeguard in enemy territory in the desert, Sin City, Las Vegas. If Fangio were to get fired, says Christian, the next coach that George Payton hires, do you think he's going to do everything he can to convince that coach to keep Mike Munchak on his staff? Mm. Zach? You know, I'm a little conflicted here because ordinarily I don't like coaches being forced to keep certain coaches or certain players. Or I like the new coach to have full autonomy to build his own staff and instill his own culture. That being said, though, Mike Munchak is no ordinary assistant. He's a you know a Hall of Fame caliber coach and was a great player, and he got the most out of Garrett Bowles, and he seemed to be turning around the Broncos' offensive line. It, it wouldn't be a deal breaker to me. I, I mean, I'm not going to – I wouldn't not hire a coach if he didn't want to keep Mike Munchak around, but I would prefer for continuity's sake, for Garrett Bowles' sake, and for the rest of the young guys uh, that he's kept around for sure. There's going to be a – if any do hold over for, for into next year on the new staff, it's going to be a select few. Mike Munchak, Bill Kolar, uh, maybe Reggie Herring, Zach Azani, and that's all I can really think of. Yeah, most definitely. Um, all right, we are at 49 minutes, so we got to kind of rapid fire these remaining supers, starting with Ed, who contributes to the content, makes the time, supports the show after the fact. So, Ed, mile high salute to you, my friend. <clears throat> Appreciate you. He says, hit the like button. Thanks, Chad and Zach. Lock 2021. Let them hate. Denver Broncos for life. State of being. And Ed, both Ed and JT are two of our community mavens who really do exemplify the hashtag, you know, Broncos country, not a geographic location. It's a state of being. So love you guys. Appreciate you, Ed. Yeah, and I realized by complimenting uh, JT right before Ed went on, it made, it made it seem like Ed can't follow JT, but he definitely crushed it. And, you know, for sure, I love talking to you, Ed. So we appreciate all your support and for all you do uh, for the brand. Thank you. Andrew Morrow, appreciate you. Hashtag Acid Hippo Fund. <laughs> all right, we got a new one cooking here, gang. We got a new one. Uh, I can get on board with Acid Hippo. Uh, Willie wants to know, hey, can I be John's first guest? We, uh, thank you for the super chat. We shall see. We haven't decided when that happens, if it's going to be a guest-oriented thing. But, hey, you know you're the first name that's going to come to mind, all right, when when that time comes. Uh, JT, also, chipping in on the content, staying up late, supporting the cause as well on Super Chat. So thanks, brother. He says, thank you, everyone, for your kind words in the chat. Just showing some love. Can't wait for the next one. Same here, guy. It's going to be fun. We can't wait till the next time. And – who knows when that will be because once the season rolls around, it's a little bit more difficult for us to schedule the superstar segments because the grind of the new cycle and the season uh, takes precedence, but it will happen. Trust. Man, you know, JT doesn't stand for J Thomas. It stands for just terrific because that's what you are. Thank you. Very Boom. cheesy, but very genuine. Amen. Amen. All right. Let me see here. Oh, Hey, Pete, what's up, dude? How you doing? Down under? Down under. <laughs> Good to see you. Great show, Priest, says Peter. Thank you. Hopefully you saw my reply to the email. I uh, need that information. And uh, part, I don't know why the provider was able to ship the mug without that information and not the hoodie, but we need that information to ship the hoodie according to the provider. So hook us up with that. Thanks, brother. Thank you, Geiger. Colby, you, what's going on, buddy? Um, I think that's all the super chats that have been patient, right, John? Oh, no, one more from Michaela. Appreciate you so much, the Duchess, with authority. She says, Broncos with Locke, 10 and 7, with Teddy, 9 and 8. Watch it. I like that because either way, you're plus 500, Zach. And, right. you know, it feels a little bit more plausible, right? Than, and no offense to... Ed, who's saying, hey, 12, 13, I'm not poo-pooing on that at all. I'm not saying, hey, that's outside the bounds of the, of the possible. I'm just saying that, you know, to go from four consecutive losing seasons to 10 and 7 or 9 and 8, I think it's just a more reasonable aspiration, not even a goal. I th- you know, 9 and 8, Chad, is it enough, though? This is my my kind of a worst-case scenario. If you're on the fence about Vic Fangio, if you want the Broncos to pursue an offensive mind or a younger coach or just go in a different direction, let's say they finish 9 and 8. They don't make the playoffs, but they do enough to save Fangio's job. It's kind of like purgatory. So I'd rather the Broncos win 10 games, win 11 games, make the playoffs. It would at least justify keeping Fangio around. If they come up just above breaking even – 
it's going to be a tough sell for another playoff this season going into 2022. Travis, yeah, we'll definitely keep you in mind, my friend. We're going to be doing some stuff for our Facebook supporters soon where we want to start bringing our, our key Facebook members onto uh, segments and stuff like that. So you're definitely in the pipeline, my friend, trust. And also, Andrew, thank you for uh, the kind words on on the quarterback article today, my friend. Get Rodgers, he says. is the, That was his takeaway from the whole thing, apparently. Um, Zach, I think we got the, the, the superstars. Before we get out of here, I just wanted to really quick get your take on the – forthcoming mega cast to be co-hosted by the Manning brothers, Peyton Manning, finally deciding to tip his big, more than just his big toe into the media waters post playing career, not just Peyton's places where he can kind of call his own shots and do whatever he wants on his own time through his Omaha productions company, but actually being on the spot. Now he's not going to be on location at these stadiums. He and his brother Eli are going to be doing these simulcast, quote unquote, mega casts from re- remote locations on ESPN2 while the game is going on ESPN and ABC. And I think it could be really cool, Zach, because you don't know when you're going to strike into something that creates a whole new arena, a whole new right. listening, viewing experience, because people in droves are abandoning the old gatekeeping media, whether it's network television, radio. They're going to long-form podcasts. They're streaming guys like you and me instead. And so you don't know what something like that could do. Maybe eventually people go, you know what? I don't need the play-by-play guy buzzing in my ear. I want these cool uh, conversations that take place between a guy like Peyton and Eli and whatever you know guests they have on that also are commenting and remarking on what's happening on the field. I just think it could be really, really cool. I mean, do I want to watch Booger or do I want to watch Peyton Manning? It's not a real (laughs) tough decision to make here. So I think they're going to dominate uh, the ESPN coverage and no one's going to watch the original telecast. And the thing about Peyton, I remember writing about it back in the day, Chad, for 24-7. The reason why he didn't accept an offer from, uh, you know, CBS or ESPN is because apparently he didn't want to call games against Eli. Now he gets to call games next to Eli, with Eli. So this is a great idea. ESPN and Walt Disney don't have too many nowadays, but this one was a home run for sure. Well said, especially that last point you made there. Yeah, that's been a fl- a uh, flailing company in terms of, I'm not talking Disney, but hey, I got my own beef with Disney relative to the whole Star Wars franchise. But as far as ESPN sports programming, man, like it's going downhill. They've been losing paying subscribers like crazy so maybe this can turn things around for him for we shall see uh willie did y'all get my last super i'm looking here i think we got it uh can can you be john's first guest that's the last one i saw my friend and we did address that but guys we got to dip on out of here so thanks to uh jt thanks to ed for making some time for us here tonight for these this unprecedented first of its kind back-to-back double header superstar segment Zach and I will be back tomorrow night for the Mile High Mailbag. Can't wait to talk to you guys and uh, you as well, partner. So sign us off. I just want to grab this real quick from BNS. We got this question every now and then because the teams do play each other this year. Uh, BNS asks, what do you do, uh, Zach, when the Broncos play the, the, the Cowboys? Aren't you a Cowboys kind of guy? No BNS, no to anyone else out there. The Cowboys pay the bills, but don't tell my other bosses this. The Broncos have my heart and they will – for, you know, for now, have my heart for sure. So it's just a business thing for me. I, I cover both, and I'm excited to see them play. I think the Denver could spring that upset. But, yeah, guys, we are out until tomorrow night. This has been the Huddle Up Podcast. Chad, happy, happy, hope you have a great night. John, have a great night. Thank you for everyone tuning in with us tonight. Thank you to JT and Edward Keating for hopping in with us tonight. Be sure to follow the Huddle Up Pod at Huddle Up Pod on Twitter. You can follow the main account on Twitter at Mile High Huddle. You can follow Chad on Twitter at Chad and Jensen. You can follow myself at Kelberman NFL. You can follow our producer, Buona Beast, at John K. MHH. If you haven't already, go to HuddleUpPod.com and get your swag on, get yourself a hat, shirt, football pre-shirt, etc., a coffee cup. Everything's out there. We appreciate your patronage. Facebook.com slash MileHighHuddlePod. Follow the page, like the page. Also, Facebook.com, if it clicks, slash MileHighHuddle. Become a supporter. Big blue button. Three exclusive shows. Kelberman's Corner, Trickle Zone, Broncos Book Club. More to come. Trust us on that. We appreciate everyone out there tuning into those shows. But if you haven't done any of that, we ask three things that take five seconds. Subscribe, like, and share each and every video you see on the channel. It helps us grow immensely. That being said, though, we are out for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow night, 6 o'clock Mountain, 8 o'clock Eastern. 
Take care. And as always, go Broncos. You've been listening to the Huddle Up Podcast. Join Broncos Country's deep divers at milehighhuddle.com to keep the conversation going.